Lori's Kitchen. Today we're going to be making a whole roasted chicken lemon flavored in the Instant Pot. And we're going to take it one step further. We're going to use the new Instant Pot air fryer lid to crisp it up at the end. Well, if you don't have an air fryer lid, I'm going to put a link to my previous recipe where I made a whole roasted chicken in the Instant Pot before and it's one where I brown it on all sides before I cook it in here under pressure. So I'll put that recipe in a card link up above for you and you could follow that if you choose. But if you have an air fryer lid or an Instant Pot Duo, you can follow this recipe. So let me show you what it looks like. It came out tender and juicy and brown and crispy on the top. So come along with me and let's make the whole roasted chicken in the Instant Pot together with the air fryer lid attachment. Let's take a look at the ingredients needed to make this recipe. First, you'll need about a five pound whole chicken. This mine is about five and a half pounds. You'll need two whole lemons. You'll need a stick of butter, about eight tablespoons. One small yellow onion, chopped one can of low sodium chicken broth. You'll need two teaspoons of your favorite seasoned salt. I like Tony's, but you can also use Lowry's. Half a teaspoon of lemon pepper seasoning. You're gonna need one teaspoon of onion powder, two teaspoons of garlic powder, one teaspoon of thyme, one teaspoon of ground black pepper, about a quarter cup of heavy cream, two teaspoons of smoky paprika, an eighth to a quarter teaspoon of xanthan gum. Take your medium onion, cut off the ends, and peel off all the skin. Once you've completed that process, we're gonna go ahead and cut it in half. And you're only gonna dice up half of the onion at a time. The other half of the onion is gonna use for the inside of the chicken. We're gonna move on to our lemons. We're gonna trim off the ends again, just like we did on the onions. And we're gonna make these lemons into slices. We're not making wedges for this recipe. They're just gonna be slices. One is gonna be for decoration and one is gonna be for cooking in the Instant Pot. We're gonna take our stick of butter and melt about four tablespoons of it in the microwave. This melted butter is gonna be the outside of the chicken. We're gonna add all the spices into it, so it's gonna be part of the rub that we put on. So let's put it in the microwave. I'm gonna put it in for 30 seconds, but I know it won't need the full 30 seconds. Take it out when it's melted. Perfect. Now we're gonna start adding our seasonings into the melted butter. We're gonna start with the lemon pepper about a half a teaspoon. Then I'm gonna take my seasoned salt. I'm using Tony's Creole seasoning, but you can use your favorite seasoned salt. We're gonna add in two teaspoons of your favorite seasoned salt. One teaspoon of onion powder. two teaspoons of garlic powder, not garlic salt, you wanna use garlic powder, half a teaspoon of ground black pepper, two teaspoons of smoked paprika, one teaspoon of ground thyme, Then we're gonna mix it with a small whisk very thoroughly. It's gonna turn almost paste-like. So this is the butter with all the seasonings. So then I went to get myself a small little bowl. I'm gonna save about one third of this mixture for basting the chicken before I put it under the air fryer. I'm gonna put away the small one third seasoning aside. So now I'm gonna get my disposable gloves Put them on because it's always good to do this when you have raw chicken. Take my raw chicken, take that piece of onion that I had left over and shove it in the cavity and shove a few of the lemons into the cavity. This is gonna give it the lemony taste. 
There's a big chunk of fat here at the end of the chicken, so I just am tearing it off. In order to get the chicken to stay together and not fall apart when it's cooking because it's so tender, I like to truss up the legs together so they're not gonna fall apart. So I just tie it with some random knots. I'm not an expert knot tire. I'm just tying it up so it'll stay in place. Cut off the extra twine and get ready to start basting my chicken. So I have my gloves on and I'm gonna go ahead and put the seasoning on top of the chicken. I'm actually gonna start on the bottom first. And I'm gonna rub it in all the skin, all the areas, cause I wanna ensure that the seasoning coats every bit of skin. After I do the bottom, I flip it over and I put the remaining amount of seasoning on the top. And you can see it gives it a nice golden color already because of the paprika. Ensure you don't waste any of the sauce and seasoning. You want it to be very flavorful when you cook it. So I pluck in my Instant Pot and it automatically says off. I push the saute button and you see it says 30 seconds. After a couple of beeps, it'll say on. And this is letting you know that it's warming up. Once it displays hot, then you know it's warm enough to start sauteing in your Instant Pot. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the remaining pats of butter to be able to saute the onions. So I'm gonna put it in, let it melt, mix it around a little. I like using a wooden spatula to saute my onions and vegetables. And you're gonna saute them just for a few moments till they're translucent. Now I'm adding in my one can of low sodium chicken broth. So I'm taking my metal trivet and I placed my raw chicken on top of it and I'm using the trivet to lower it into the Instant Pot. Extra lemony flavor. Go ahead and put some of these lemon slices on top of the chicken while you cook it. One thing to keep in mind is that the rind is on there and the bitterness from the rind will incorporate into your chicken. So now we're getting ready to put on the Instant Pot lid. First I need to pop on this valve cover ensure that my ceiling ring is put in place and that it's set down all the way. I always run my fingers around it a couple of times to ensure that the whole thing is sitting flatly against the lid. Last thing you want is that the seal doesn't work properly and you can't get to pressure. I'm gonna put on my lid, lock it in place, and set the valve to sealing. Now that the pot is closed up, we're gonna get ready to set the cook settings. I'm gonna hit cancel because it was on saute mode and I'm gonna hit high pressure and I'm gonna bring up the number to 30 minutes. We're gonna cook it on high pressure for 30 minutes. When it's done, we're gonna do a 15 minute natural release. When you hear the beeps, you know that it's gonna get started and there it is. Now that it says on, we're gonna wait for it to get to pressure. When it gets to pressure, it starts counting down. The display is now showing the last minute of pressurized cooking time. Now it's completely done. It says L000. Now you know it's under natural pressure release. We're gonna let it sit under natural pressure release for about 15 minutes. I actually got sidetracked doing some things around the kitchen and as you can see, it's under natural pressure release for 22 minutes and the pin has dropped, so it's completely depressurized. Now that it's depressurized, we're gonna go ahead and remove the lid. We unlock it, lift it up, and there's our cooked roast chicken. It already looks and smells amazing. So if you don't have an Instant Pot air fryer lid, you can remove it from the Instant Pot using the trivet right now and let it rest and go ahead and eat it. You can also take it from the Instant Pot and put it under your broiler for a few minutes if you'd like but I'm gonna go ahead and finish it up in the Instant Pot. So I'm gonna take my remaining amount of basting ingredients, which was the butter and all the spices, and I'm gonna baste it all over the top of my chicken. I'm leaving all the liquid in the bottom of the pot. I don't have to take it out at this time, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use up the rest of my baste, cover all the sides that I can. In order to use the air fry lid, you need to not just turn your Instant Pot off, but you need to unplug it completely. If you don't unplug it, you could have a short because of the amount of power that the air fryer lid's on. So now that you can see my Instant Pot is off and unplugged, I'm gonna get my lid ready. 
As you can see, there's a little trivet on the upper part of my screen. I'm going ahead and putting on my lid. It seems kind of awkward because it doesn't lock in. You just set it in place. It lines up in the back of it. Now I'm going to plug it in. And as you can see, they have a safety feature. When you plug it in, you can't have two appliances plugged in the same plug at the same time. The display comes on and it says off, just like the Instant Pot. The trivet is close by. We're going to press the broil button and it defaults to 400 degrees and we're going to just leave it on for 10 minutes but one thing with the instapot lid you have to push the start button you really don't need to preheat on this it'll actually start cooking pretty fast let's go ahead and wait a few minutes before we check it after the air fryer lid was cooking for about five minutes i go ahead and remove it and place it safely on the trivet you can see it has gotten a little more golden brown. It is a little bit crispy, but I want to make it a little more crispy than what it is now. So I'm going to go ahead and just easily put the lid back on the pot. It tells me lid error when it's not in place. And I'm going to let it continue cooking for five more minutes. When the five minutes are done, it says end and cool. I'm going to hit cancel, remove the air frying lid and put it on the trivet. You can see that the chicken has browned very nicely. So now that it's all brown and ready to go, I'm going to get my silicone mitts and get ready to take it out so I can lift it straight out of the pot with the trivet all in one piece, put it on a plate. And look at what that chicken looks like, nice and brown and roasted. Now that the chicken is removed from the pot, I'm going to plug back my Instant Pot and put on the saute function to warm up the pot to finish the gravy. So I'm pulling out all the lemon because some of the edges are a little bit bitter. And I'm also pulling out some of the extra onions because not everyone in my family is a fan of onions. So as you can see, my sauce that's in the pan right now is already starting to bubble, but we want to go ahead and thicken this. So once it becomes to a rapid boil, we're going to be using some xanthan gum to thicken it. And so xanthan gum is very sensitive. You just put in a little bit at a time. Have your whisk ready and whisk it and then let it cook for a minute and see how thick it is. You don't want to dump the whole thing in at once because it might become too thick for your liking. So xanthan gum, again, is keto friendly, making this a keto friendly dish. And if you don't want to make it keto style, go ahead and use a cornstarch slurry like you normally would on all other types of gravies. So now that it's been cooking, I'm going to go ahead and give it a taste test, see if I need to adjust any of the spices. And for me, it tasted pretty good, so I went ahead and put in about an eighth of a cup of heavy cream just to thicken it up a little more and make it a little more creamier. Give it a good stir. Keep stirring. You don't want it to burn at the bottom of your dish. And now I'm putting in more xanthan gum because as you can see, it's not as thick as I would like it. So you just got to keep stirring, ensuring that it's not sticking to the bottom of the pan. I still wanted my sauce just a little bit thicker, so I'm going to go ahead and add the remaining of the xanthan gum into the dish. This should thicken it up just right. Again, I'm going to cook it for at least a minute before I'm going to turn off the heat. Again, one more time, I'll probably adjust the seasonings just to make sure everything tastes well. Put a little cracked pepper in. If you taste any bitterness from the lemon peel, you can always add in a little bit of sugar or sugar substitute. If you like it just the way it is, that's fine. That's how I liked it. So. I gave it another taste test and it was a nice light lemony gravy and it was perfect for me so it's time to turn off the instant pot keep in mind the gravy will thicken when it cools now you can pour the gravy over the whole chicken just to keep it moist or you can just pour it on each individual serving I like to do both doesn't that look amazing so there you have it whole roasted chicken in the Instant Pot lemon flavor with the air frying lid to crisp it up. If you enjoyed this recipe, please give my video a thumbs up and comment down below. If you would like to see more of my videos, please hit the subscribe button and turn on your notification bell to be informed when my next weekly video is available. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.